And there's clear expectations for uh, all IP networks, like new services, increased service velocity, and cost reduction. So how do these technologies like RAN, modular interface, and service configuration facilitate these new expectations? Here in the Dell TI Now studio at TIA 2016 is Aparna Kurjaker, Vice President of Networks at Verizon Wireless, to give us some insight into these technologies. And Aparna, thank you for being with us. Absolutely, pleasure to be here. Yeah, I know you just came off a keynote. First of all, how, how did that go? It, it went well, I thought. I was in between um, lunch and the people, so <laughs> that was fun. But I, I think I was able to uh, drive some points. There was some good feedback afterwards, so thank you for asking. Sure, so I want to talk about these uh, new and uh, sort of nascent expectations uh, for the network, like new services, as I, as I mentioned, increased service velocity and cost reduction. How is the evolution of RAN facilitating these uh, expectations? Yeah, very good question. So um, there's a lot that's going on as far as capacity is concerned in our networks, and rightfully so. There's just a, a, a steep curve you're seeing and an exponential growth in that data demand. And um, I call it the SimCity for us because what we're trying to do for Network Weeks, what we're trying to do is make sure we're focused on the urban centers. And we've all obviously covered the urban centers with macro coverage right now. What we've started doing very successfully is going low and tight, and that's the mantra. We have small cells, outdoor DASs, that are starting to take on a lot of the congestion, take on a lot of the capacity offload, as we call it, and then we're moving into the buildings. You know, the towers going vertically lit. So again, that's another level of offload. Then what we do is make sure that the spectrum is added on and overlaid so all of this gives you this immense level of capacity and bandwidth you can start working with. The key there then becomes making sure that we've got the right kinds of um, uh, backhaul, dark fiber is the way we're going, to connect these different nodes and start playing with each other through the right kind of interaction, the CRAN interaction. And SON, Things like uh, making sure that we've got the right tools for automation are really helping to extend into the eventual virtualization that we're going to see there. This is not just happening for the tomorrow, it's happening today for the needs that we're starting to solve for, for today. Now before your keynote address and last night I had a chance to look at your, uh, your slide deck presentation and there was an interesting end-to-end -end device integration sort of strategy for the Internet of Things. Can you sort of walk us through that? Yeah, absolutely. We're very excited about that. So what we're doing now is, as you already said, we need service velocity and we need the flexibility and we need to make sure that with a single click people can start connecting and actually doing the right kinds of services and applying the right kinds of services. And IoT is a great place to do that. We have a path to millions, we want to get to billions. And how do we do that? Well, the right way to do it is to make sure that we've got the right vertical slice, um, actually the network slice, end to end, to make sure that everything is connected. For whom? For our uh, developers, for our customers, and then even our partners. We've got a very good exhaustive set of devices, some very unique to machine to machine, the CAT1 devices. So we'll have a CAT-M device that can connect to virtual network functions within the network. So you've got the right kinds of load balances, the routers, and any of the virtual network functions connected and chained together into the SmartThings platform. This is a single pane platform where developers can develop and they have access to the right kinds of APIs for our network. And then the customers can actually onboard and manage their applications and devices the right way, do the analytics, do the reporting, and do the management. And our partners can actually then take a lot of these services out to the market. So a very good end-to-end -end story, and it's defining how virtualization should work in reality. Now again, I, another part of your uh, slide deck presentation was talking about new technologies and improved technologies for 5G communications. Uh, one of those improved technologies was modular interfaces and also service configuration. Can you talk about that in relation to 5G? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, many people ask me, what is 5G? Is it this one big standard that's going to be dropped and then everyone just goes and builds to it? That's really not the case. What 5G is, is a, it's a conglomeration of a bunch of modules, a bunch of of things that are happening. What I just talked about with RAN is a part of it. What I just talked about with NFV and SDN, you know, IoT is just one component, but there are other network slices. They are components of 5G as well. And then there is multi-RAT. 
So there is a whole bunch of radio access technologies, including LTE, LTE Advanced, including Wi-Fi, LTE, uh, U, LAA, and then millimeter waves. You've got to take all of those together and put it in there. What's happening with, with 5G is we're trying to solve for multiple diverse needs from the network. And that's where modularization comes in. Now, instead of talking about just the bandwidth, or just the speed and the coverage, we're starting to extend it into security, latency, battery life, availability, pervasiveness, and those are the modular concepts. Those are, those are the dimensions that are, we're going to start making sure that there are services defined for. And that's what 5G is going to bring to fruition. Now, have there any changes uh, come about uh, recently with your spectrum policy framework from Verizon's perspective? Yeah, so 5G is a completely different ballgame. Look, we're talking about over 10 gig, gigabits. And as you start talking about that, you're not talking in spectrums of tens of megahertz, you're talking in hundreds of megahertz. So these are typically gonna come in the higher frequencies, right? So you're talking 28 gig and above. What we're really excited about is that FCC, FCC has actually um, started supporting that. They have an NPRM that they've released with uh, four blocks of frequencies, all in the higher gig range, um, starting with the LMDS 28 gig. And um, that is gonna make sure that we are on, we as US are on the global map with 5G, first in full force, commercialized. What Verizon's done now is we've got a whole bunch of test spectrum that we're using, definitely out there in the fields, and we have possibilities of starting to look at some pre-commercial trials with some real spectrum in the 28 gig. So very excited about where this, uh, this entire evolution of spectrum is headed as far as 5G is concerned, and we're right there. Yeah, we're, we're excited to see how Verizon's really supporting the network, really specifically for IoT and 5G, so a lot to talk about in the coming Absolutely. years, I'm sure. Aparna, thanks for your time. Thank you. All right, appreciate it. And uh, thank you for joining us at TIA 2016 from the Dell TI Now studio. For more coverage, please visit us at tinow.org. So long.